Hey, everybody. Welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 501, being recorded on Wednesday, May 30th, 2018. I'm your host tonight, Jim Tannis. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. Josh is <laughs> muted. No, he's not. Josh Walrus. No, he, no. He's just... Oh, dear God. I, I can do this too, Josh. Sure you can. And but together well we're the B team. Who are you, Ken? Ken Addison. What? Well, thanks for joining us anyway. Uh, apologize. Everything's, everything's out of whack because Ken at the last second like just wimped out. You can't assume I'm going to host. I've you, never hosted. No, but we can't you assume you'll wimp out. I don't think I have. Really? No. Well, that, mm. okay. Well, so I'm in the wrong seat, so just turn your monitor upside down. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah. So uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we host this show uh, live every Wednesday night at 10 Eastern, 7 Central. Uh, figure it out in your remaining time zones. Uh, and you can join us uh, if you want to watch it live at pcpro.com slash live. Uh, if you want to know when we go live, like if you're watching this after the fact and you want to join the show and insult us in the chat or just otherwise participate, uh, we have a special mailing list that uh, notifies you for all of our special special events, and that is uh, pcpro.com slash subscribe. That's, we don't use that as marketing. We don't sell it. It's just a plain text email that says, hey, we're about to go live either for the podcast or for uh, special events we do for giveaways, things like that. Uh, and we do a lot of giveaways with our live streams, and you usually have to be watching live to win. So make sure you sign up for that, and uh, you will never miss a show except for the times we forget to send the email, uh, which unfortunately happens more than you might think. Um, some other uh, housekeeping matters here. Um, we've got our weekly mailbag series. I didn't miss anything, did I? Okay, we're already getting off to a rocky Patreon. start. Here. Patreon. Patreon, sorry. <laughs> if you'd like to support us, because the economics of websites uh, has changed, uh, you can uh, support us directly at PC, or I'm sorry, patreon.com slash PC per. Uh, you're probably all familiar with Patreon. It's a way for creators, people who create stuff, to have direct contributions from the people who enjoy what they create. And you can give as much or as little as you want there. It's a monthly basis, so a dollar a month, five, ten. Uh, the normal policy is if you increase your uh, existing pledge or make a new pledge during the show, Ryan gets a notification on his phone, and you and he will read out your name or whatever you put in the name field. Uh, he is in Texas? I think so. Texas now. Yeah. So he, we won't be able to do that because those go straight to him. Uh, but... He gets a notification when it happens. So if you'd like to give him a little bit of a chuckle or say something horrible that'll keep him up at night. I'm sure he's at some very important dinner right now mm -hmm. and you look at his phone and be horrified. Yeah, just so be perfect. Definitely do that. Or if you want to, you know, just keep in mind if you want to do it live, you want to, you know, get the recognition on the air, just, uh, you know, wait, wait till next week and, and check it out there. But uh, we really appreciate that uh, because that, uh, that, Patreon program allows us to do some extra content like our mailbag, which is our weekly Q and a show where one of the staff sits down. It's, it's usually Ryan, uh, although, uh, coming up tomorrow, it's going to be, uh, Josh. So make sure you, you tune in for that one. And basically we answer your questions for 15 or 20 minutes. You can send us our, your questions by leaving a comment in the YouTube uh, video section at the website at pcpro.com because we post a link there, or you can send it on Twitter, send it to Ryan Shroud at Ryan Shroud or at PC per, uh, and we'll pick them up there as well. Uh, so don't uh, forget to miss that. Um, and don't our, forget to miss that. Don't forget to, that doesn't. Don't forget no, to miss you it. you were right. I got it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is solid advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, don't forget definitely. to ignore it because, completely. Because uh, I, I, I have a little birdie who's given me some inside information on the questions for this week. And uh, if you've ever wondered about Josh's personal care routine, for how he keeps that dome so lustrous. Be sure to Lust tune in. Wow. Yes. Um, and also, uh, one, more, one other thing, of course, is that we finally uh, recently, after many years and many requests, introduced our merchandise store. It's at... Uh, JoshTech.com. JoshTech.com. Mm -hmm. We got that redirect. Okay. JoshTech.com Josh or Teespring.com slash stores slash PC per. And you can pick up uh, a Josh Tech mug with Josh Walrus. Uh, Sans tusks, but otherwise adorable. 
uh, or the uh, PC Per logo or one of our lovely slogans that I'm sure we've stolen uh, from any number of copyrighted now we and came trademark up with this properties. One. This is totally original. Do we still okay. have Sweet Sweet Lemonade or did we drop no, that I, one? I stopped selling that because that literally was yes that was not <laughs> us so uh yeah if you if you want to uh if you want to support us but you also want to get a little something physical there uh, other than some manhandling by josh you can pick up a shirt and just uh get a size too small have it hug you a little bit and pretend it's josh uh so and uh, a little bit of every purchase goes to us to help us out so we appreciate that as well all right jumping into the show uh or i'm sorry one more housekeeping matter this is the final Day 28 hours left, 28 hours recording to enter our massive May giveaway. Uh, it's from EVGA. We're giving away all of that wonderful stuff there. We've got motherboards, we've got uh, water, you know, all in one water coolers, power supplies, cases, uh, keyboards, uh, all this great stuff from EG, uh, EVGA. Uh, head over to uh, do we have a short link for that? You know, I don't think so. Okay, well, that's our bad. Uh, just go to PCPro.com. There's a link there on the on the site to get in there or check the show notes to this uh, this episode, and you can enter there. Uh, there's multiple ways to enter, and like we said, 28 hours left, uh, and we'll be drawing winners for all that great stuff. So well, thanks to EVGA for that, and uh, be sure to get your entry in. That is tagged, so you could go to PCPro.com slash contest, couldn't you? Uh, that's not quite how the tags oh, work. We, it's, it's a longer URL than that. Nah, never mind. Yeah. That's real, a lot of entries. Real first class operation we got here. Um, slash category, slash tag, slash contest. <laughs> that's I mean, not easier. It that's, rolls off the tongue. No, it's not easier at all. Never <laughs> mind. Taxonomy, whoever heard of it. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into the news. Uh, we've got, uh, first up, we have a, uh, a review from uh, Christopher Koch, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is a... Uh, a really interesting product. Uh, it's the Corsair Dark Core RGB wireless gaming mouse, along with their or it's a gaming mouse pad and accompanying mouse. And this is similar. We, we took a look at uh, the Logitech version of this. They're a similar product. It's, yeah, I forget what they call that now. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they had the name finalized yeah. when we reviewed it. It was a pre-release that we looked at. But the the concept is. It's a it's a mouse pad that has wireless charging built into it, and then they have mice that they've built for this that you can then uh, charge your mouse without having to plug it into anything. Now the Logitech one, and I think uh, Razer's got one as well that that covers the whole surface of the pad. So any time your mouse is on that pad, it's getting a a little bit of charge, theoretically enough to always compensate for what you're using, so you never have to charge it. This one's a little different. It's got, uh, you can see in the picture here, if you're looking at the review, it's got a circle on the right side there. And, uh, oh, the picture's too big. And uh, the mouse has to be there. That is the wireless charging part. The rest of it is just a standard mouse pad with RGB. Uh, that circle area is the, the charging uh, section. Uh, the, the good news is that that also charges, it's, it's uh, Qi compatible. Am I pronouncing that right, Qi? Yeah. The QI, you know. Uh, so you you can charge your iPhone, you can charge your other wireless devices. Yeah, they actually ship with adapters, like little little yeah, nubbins, you get a little puck, which yeah. aren't exactly the cleanest way to charge your phone. I but guess you yeah. have a micro USB, and then they provide converters for Lightning and USB Type C. Better than nothing. Yeah. Uh, so, the, but the only thing is, you got to remember in order to get that true sort of never have to charge your mouse thing, you got to remember to move the mouse to that spot when you're done with your session. It, it's kind of like the whole space pen versus pencil thing, right? With the, mm -hmm. the whole sort of tail with the Russians the, yeah. and the US, yeah. we reinvented the wheel. Like, you could put all of this R&D effort into making a mouse pad that's a really large inductive charger and all this new cutting edge technology, or you could just put a little. Keep cheek oil in one corner of it. Yeah, and uh, Chris had a very good, uh, very good impressions of it. Uh, and and also another factor there too is that this makes it cheaper. Uh, yeah. The Logitech one is two fifty, and the Razer one's two hundred, mm. or is it the other way around? Uh, Razer's two fifty, and the Logitech. Yeah, I can't remember. Well, it's one of those. And then this one's only if you if you pair the mouse and the pad, it's comes like one sixty or one seventy. Maybe pretty good. Uh, so it's 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 quite a bit cheaper than the other uh, options. Um, so, and he said it worked, it worked well, uh, good tracking, you know, it's an attractive, uh, attractive mouse, attractive, uh, pad, nice lighting effects that you can customize through the Corsair software. Um, kind of pseudo looking carbon fiber 
crap. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's I imagine the style. that's an actual texture on. Yeah, it's there texture. to help. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like texture. Dimpled for pleasure. your pleasure. For your pleasure. Yeah. It's got the pass. And shockingly uh, enough, this will actually fit into that Corsair K63 lap board. What a oh, coincidence! That he uh, reviewed a couple of weeks ago. There you go. Yeah. So uh, overall, if you I mean, if you're looking for something, like this, this is certainly not a product for everyone. Uh, but if you're looking for something like this, um, this I'm looking one, for something, but it's not a mouse. Honeycomb, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what's the buttons on the left side where the thumb rest is? I think it's a yeah. Up there is that a multiple yeah, forward and back, and then maybe a middle button there. Yeah, forward and back, and a center sniper. Hmm. That's eh. Eh. okay. I like a forward eh. and back button a lot on a mouse. Uh, oh yeah! Once you get used to that, you can't go. Yeah, you it, can't no. go back. Um, but uh, yeah, so it looks like a great option there uh, for for these this new category where of wireless wireless uh, charging mice. Uh, so again, that's the uh, Corsair Dark Core RGB SE wireless gaming mouse, along with their MM one thousand mouse mouse pad. And you need both. That's the the other thing is you need to both. They you can buy them together, but. Don't go buy in one or the other because you. I, I mean, I guess the I guess you could just buy the mouse and use a standard G charger, but that would be well, really, yeah, but really awkward. Sure, sure, yeah. All right. Uh, next up, uh, we've got a review from Alan. What? Uh, that, that must be a typo. Yeah, uh, because uh, he's gone, right? Yeah, yeah, he's gone for good. He the country. Him. This is this is the summer without Alan. Um, Come back to Korea again, has he? I guess uh, he, he might. I, I, last I heard, he was in a Turkish prison because I guess thermal paste looks an awful lot like some sort of street drug. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. he's yeah, but he hmm. uh, we won't be seeing him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but he's still submitting from beyond the grave, beyond the I don't know behind the bars. Sure, uh, behind the iron curtain. So what we got here is an A Data XPG SX eighty two hundred. It's an M.2 NVMe SSD, 480 gigabyte capacity is the one he tested. And the key here is uh, price. It's a, it's a very well performing, it's not the best, but it performs very well for the price. Um, well, it's, it's like better than, than the first generation of the uh, Western Digital Black, which was two gigabyte per second and mm-hmm. something like 1300 uh, writes. Yeah, it's uh, it's not as good as the new Western Digital Black, no. right? But boy, at one hundred and sixty nine bucks retail. Yeah, I mean, look at the QD performance compared to all of the sort of drives in a similar price point. Like it just kind of walks all over everything. Yep, it it like, it's at full speed at QD so too. And doesn't stop. Or sequentials. It's a silicon cool. motion, right? I believe yes. so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah, got the, the, it's uh, one of the first with the uh, two eighty TLC. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! Do it now. Oh, no. Remind me tomorrow. Now pick a time. <laughs> pick a time, any time. Just scroll as far as we can. Next Tuesday, okay. We'll just pass this on to next week then. Pick that Got can it. down the road. <laughs> future Ken is going to hate you. No, uh, future Coming Ryan's to you every Wednesday. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, th- so this drive actually hits the same perf as the 970 at a much much lower Q depth. Is that what the takeaway is? Well, uh, that was that's the burst performance. I think sequential. It's more towards the middle of the pack. You can see it here. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly the most impressive thing. Like if you look at the 970 Evo, it's kind of walking all over everything for sequentials. But yeah, it seems to be at least right right there in most of the tests, if not a little bit above average. Kind of like the advanced generation. Remember when uh, what my digital SSD had there, two hundred dollar, mm-hmm. uh, five hundred, yeah, well, four hundred eighty gig. One that uh, you know it, it had good performance for the time, but uh, yeah, this uh, undercuts it by thirty bucks and performs better. It's the, the one of the later generations of the Silicon Motion controller plus the uh, the new uh, the new memory. Yeah, thirty five cents a gig see. in the sweet spot MSRP. That's that's pretty damn good. Yeah, and capacity is <laughs> up to two terabytes, although that's not yet available. Coming later this later. year. Still nowhere near Ryan's uh, Ryan's law. Ten cents yeah. gig? No. Yeah. But in the land of reality, <laughs> pretty good. So does the sticker have like a copper strip on it, or is it just 
You know, I don't I know. I don't know. I did not physically see this. Alan must have been testing it Alan. Uh, before he Let's ran see. Does off. Does he have a teardown pick in here? I'm not seeing one. He, he has an internals pick. Much disappoint. Mother is scratcher of... You know, he doesn't answer the big questions. Yeah. Like it matters anyway. Just leave your. Just gotta get that cool. You think we memory went there last hot. week, and there you go. Yeah. So, so this is a five-year warranty. How does that compare to the others in its price range? Damn. Uh, Sounds like, like seven. Three. Is it? I think. I think there's a couple With of threes, a couple of sevens. It's gonna be five. five to seven. But it's, yeah, it's everything not, else. It's not bad. It's certainly. Mm. Not unusual or that seems pretty powerful for the course. Yeah. Okay. Great. I would consider three years to be par for the course, so this is above average. Okay. Fair okay. enough. Yeah. So take that. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I will take it. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take that yeah. to the bank. Where are you gonna take it? Where is you gonna take it someplace nice? No. I'm gonna take it out to dinner and then well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's that thing is so amazingly small. Uh, we it's just we got in some vastly smaller M.2 SSDs this week. Yeah, I'm but saying. it's like a stick of gum. This I is, love it. This is way smaller. I think it's well, cylinder in the A, so I can't really say anything. Oh. That, yeah. Are we talking chiclet size? Well, or? M.2 has different form factors, let's say. Okay. It sure does. So 2280 is kind of one of the larger, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. There's one above that. There's 110, there which is, is like yeah. only Enterprise SSDs, I think. Yeah. And then there are two smaller ones. So would this be the first commercially available smaller one? I don't think, think it's the first, but no. like I know Sebastian was reviewing a mini PC at some point and like found one, but I think it was maybe M.2 SATA. I don't know which mm-hmm. ones these are. Okay. What else can you Still, tell like, us sticking the gum the chips in as well? If they were announced. I just don't know what the line is. Okay. <laughs> so okay. you can you can do some figuring. Sure. <laughs> Any other pictures we got to look at here? I don't think so. Yeah, but they're of Jim. There are no giant caps for me to look at. One other thing, and I'm trying to think what it was. What it was. Uh, NPME 1.3, that's the latest, right? I believe so. Are all the uh, earlier ones still like 1.2, some of the other crap that you can get? Man, you're really asking at the that wrong price crowd. range. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know enough about it. But anyway, what, yeah. What that's, time is it in Brussels? Let's get Alan on the phone here. Six hours ahead. Oh, I think. I don't I can't tell time. <laughs> Eight uh, hours for me, but who cares? All uh, right. Well let's uh well if if there are any other questions, anybody in the chat in, in particular is curious about something specific about that drive, uh leave a comment and we will Alan's checking email and stuff uh when he gets rec time at the prison. So <laughs> We'll make sure he gets gets back to you on any specific questions that we can't answer did, for you. Did you just say rec time? Rec time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not rec time. Got a C64 all hooked up. I'm reading his emails. Okay. Moving on. Uh, we've got the... This is something interesting. Intel is launching Optane in a dim form factor because NVMe is not fast enough. To fully take advantage of Optane's uh, potential. Potential, yeah. Or not NVMe, I mean uh, PCI, right? Yeah. Yeah. And operating systems in general don't sure. like to address system storage at really low latencies, as, as it turns out. At yeah. least Windows, Linux is certainly better with it. So yep. they've 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 introduced this concept here. Uh, it's going to come in capacities up to 500. Well, in, in usable capacities up to 512 gigabytes. But you're not going to be able to just go buy one, right, Ken? Yeah, as far as I know, I don't know if they gave a any sort of date range for general rollout. But I believe right now they're doing like. Kind of like they did with the Optane, where they're putting in some servers and giving some developers remote access to those servers, and not giving them actual hardware. Sure, they're they're populating uh, servers with like 192 gigs of RAM, and then like 512 gigs of this Optane DC persistent memory, as the branding is, as they announced today, which is going to take some getting used to. 
yeah. to sort of optimize the application, see what they can do with it. And then hopefully when it launches and people actually put it in servers, there are really good use cases and workflows. Yeah. But, uh, well, it's their whole idea that they want to, to bridge the gap in speed between you get what you get on die on the processor and between memory and the processor, as you can see right there. Mm -hmm. Is it between memory and the cache of the processor or memory and a solid state storage device? It's memory and a solid state storage and, and device. Yeah. Because uh, random access memory is still going to be faster than Optane. Mm -hmm. yes. But not as much as you think. But it's going to be a hell of a lot faster than an SSD attached to SATA or PCIe. Right, because this is a logarithmic graph we're looking at, or we're looking at. We love Let's logarithmic just consult scales. That's a fun marketing video. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got a minute 47 to waste. Performance capacity. So we probably don't have the, the information. The missing link. <laughs> the missing link between performance. Yeah, uh, I was supposed to be at this event, but uh, flight delays led me to not be there. So I don't have necessarily the inside scoop yet. I read a couple of articles that people posted. Anantech had a pretty good article talking about the stuff today. So why aren't you letting us in? Why am I not Talk letting about you it, in? Ken. Come on. I talked about it for a little bit. I talked about their what strategy with virtual servers and such for development. It's, Ooh, look, yeah. hot and warm. Nice. <laughs> the ball is under the first green cup. And, and <laughs> let's go ahead and say this isn't going to be something you're going to put in your Z570 based motherboard. This no. is definitely a server technology, and it will be a server technology for quite a while. If It would be surprising if it really ever made it down to consumer desktop level. Mm -hmm. It's not really a whole lot of need for really, really fast persistent memory on no, gaming never PCs. say never. Hey, man, that, that's true. Many, many picoseconds of my life I'll never get back waiting for a game to load. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Elder Scrolls Six is eventually coming out, so... Yeah, I don't yeah. think memory will be your issue with stability in an Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> So I know we talked about this earlier before the podcast, and we didn't really have an answer for it. So Optane usually shows up as a block device, right? Mm -hmm. Now we have it in a DIM. How does that actually show up to the system as hardware? Is that just random addressable memory, or is that a block device that's running over a DIM transport layer? I mean, do we have any idea what the situation that's is for that? That's a good question, Alex. I'm I'm guessing the second one is yeah. is what yeah. it is because you've got I mean it's not going to treat it as RAM. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to have something in the in the firmware of the motherboard that says these DIMMs are going to be a longer term storage. You're going to have to address latencies. You're going to have to address how you address the damn thing, yeah. and then the other ones for memory. And so and then you have to have the operating system on top of that be able to figure out which is which. Because otherwise, it just ain't going to work. Mm. But you've got a 128-bit wide connection directly to the CPU with fast storage of big storage. That's a nice thing, but you've got to have some pretty sweet OS support and pretty good firmware support. And your CPU needs to know what the hell it's looking at. Right. So that's, this Otherwise, is it's going to spend a lot of time going, wait, that was a lot quicker than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's, it's going to do a, a random memory access, and it's going to be like, why is it so damn slow as compared to DDR4? <laughs> well, isn't there a an extension to the JDEC standard for DDR4 that does persistent storage type interfaces, or am I thinking of something completely different? Yeah, what were they called? What were they called before this? Sort of the I more can't generic. remember to look it oh. up because I, I can remember posting something about it because there's a couple of people working on this. Yeah, it's been going around for years and it's been in some production and some servers. There hasn't been a whole lot of platform support. The thing about Optane in like being an Intel technology, Intel will add it to their plat Xeon platforms and well, it's, immediately it's, have support. It's been the dream of Flash for yeah. the last 20 yeah. years to have it close to the CPU and have lots of storage that can be accessed very, very quickly at low latencies and still be non-volatile. But, you know, back in the 90s, 
flash storage was extremely expensive, extremely small, and had problems. And then memory speeds got faster, and, and people started building larger caches and CPUs. And then it didn't make as much sense to try to do that. Now we're finally at the point where we've got technology at the memory level, the, the chip level, that can handle these speeds and latencies and, and still be non-volatile. And my wife is yelling in the background. <laughs> at least no, it's not at you. As yeah, North Ranger, right in the middle of my, my, my soliloquy of, of memory technologies. <laughs> Maybe I should mute and yell her. And yeah, Okay. Anyway, go, go away. I'm going to mute and yell. <laughs> NVDIM was the term, but we're still we're talking about off term we were searching for. NVDIM. NVDIM. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and as uh, multiple people have pointed out in the chat, that has been a standard in the Linux kernel for a yeah. while now. A, yeah, a but while now. I don't think we know if that's what Intel is using. You would think that Intel would, you know, use the standards that are out there, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You could develop think a that. brand new motherboard for you to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of defying... Conve at least conventions, standard conventions. Let's talk about this. So, Dell, uh, like a lot of manufacturers, is is uh, selling. They've been selling systems that have Optane caching built in. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryan uh, the other day found on this little tidbit, they are uh, advertising their G3 gaming laptop uh, by, and they're advertising the memory. Just uh, at least that's the upfront presentation the memory quantity as the sum of your ram and your optane storage so in this screenshot they say hey this G g3 model has 24 gigs of memory and that's 8 gigs of ram 16 gigs of optane and they, they do clarify that down below uh but it is interesting that that that's how they're choosing to portray this and and there's there's a i you can understand where they're coming from you know this is at least they didn't say it was 28 uh, sure. Count the video memory in there as well. <laughs> well okay, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, this is Optane is storage that will improve your 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 responsiveness, your system responsiveness. Uh, whether that's because it's just caching your existing data, or if we get into maybe some page file stuff, if you run out of physical memory and you're paging, if it's and again, we're not we we had some discussions about this. We're not quite sure how it would always handle that. But if you start to page and you're going to page to your Optane versus your, your hard drive, well, that's obviously going to be much faster uh, as well. So for the average consumer who isn't really concerned with the technical stuff, I, you know, I guess you could say that you know maybe a system for some workloads with, with 8 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of Optane is going to be better, maybe, than a system with 16 gigs of RAM and no Optane and just a mechanical hard drive. Uh, so what do you guys think about the way Intel's and Intel and Dell are positioning this? You know, I think it's okay, especially at the, the price point that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to work well for a lot of people. Um, you're not, you're going to, you're, you're not going to be doing heavy duty video editing on, at an i5. You're going to do some I, gaming, and that's going to be perfectly fine. It's going to fit into a lot of stuff in, in 8 gigs, because yeah. what game developer thinks, oh, hey, we need 16 gigs minimum. Especially today. We're not today. quite there yet. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and, yeah, and it is uh, important like to Fortnite. know. It's like, uh, yeah, it does not require that big of a memory. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, is, it is important to know this is their gaming brand. Uh, they're not doing this on their pro laptops, as far as I've seen. Uh, yeah, so this, I'll see on this line. Yeah, this is it's a gaming line. It's a low end, you know, or a low to mid range price point. Um, I mean, I have absolutely no problem with them making offering this configuration. I'm just a little hesitant because for so long, memory, the word memory in a computer spec sheet, has meant physical DRAM. Yeah, and so yeah, but the the average consumer who buys this for eight hundred bucks is not going to notice a difference. And in fact, it would take some serious benchmarking to be able to really get away from okay, here's eight gig, sixteen gigs versus a sixteen gig basic setup of of just memory. It's 
It's sure, but but you know, you're robbing but, Peter but to pay it Paul. Except games in memory. this case, yeah. Paul is actually doing shit, so you're you're fine with it. And, and that's fine. Like it's a, it's a completely valid configuration of laptop to have this is probably one eight gig DIMM and a sixteen gig Optane storage acceleration. Just don't call it twenty four gigs of memory because it's not. But it's Optane memory. The Optane, that's the same the thing, Optane right? goes with the hard drive entry, not the RAM entry. And, and my fear, Josh, is that I think, so, and again, because it's the gaming line, I don't know, maybe that gets more comp- complicated or nuanced. But, you know, I, I, there are people who are not technically sophisticated in terms of specs who still do things like edit video or, um, you know, do, do uh, large database work or something. You know, they're, they're trained in an application. They're trained as a, in doing a particular they're task. They're like lots of Chrome tabs. But even then, yeah, sure, and and so they may not know what that means. They may they may understand. They may have some concept of what memory is, but they may not understand the distinction between what Optane and DRAM is. Well, if if this was like their yeah, entry level it's... thing, that would be one case. But this is their gaming line, and I would uh, think the people who are yeah. buying a gaming laptop mm-hmm. are going to be not their highest end gaming, gaming line. Gaming no, the, the, the person buying the gaming laptop is going to go, okay, I want big numbers. And you say, okay, it's got 24 gigs of memory, which is, and they're already, I'm already bored. I don't care. You say it has 24 gigs, sell it to me. <sighs> There's a lot of people, and I, it frustrates me to no end because it's like, no, you need to understand this unless because you're going to come back in a month and complain about it. But people are going to get bored they're, when you're trying not, to say, well, it's eight gigs, gigs of this RAM of memory and a modern operating this. system. Huh? Well, it, who is going to complain about eight gigs of memory on a modern operating system? Anyone running Creative That's Cloud. That's not the apps. argument we're making, Josh. Okay, who is is a person running Creative Cloud going to buy a seven hundred nineteen dollar laptop? They to might. Run? No. They might. Do you know how many people stream on Twitch and post the videos to YouTube later these days? Like, video editing is now a way more mainstream workload than it's ever been. Yeah, but okay, that, fine. That, that, that's let me ask you this. Let, me, let me ask you a question. Do you remember back in the day when you got a small SSD, what did you do with it? Did you load the operating system on it? Or did you <laughs> My dog's attacked somebody. Or did you use it kind of as just a cache? I, I mean, if Alan was here, yeah. he would go. He would. He would. He would. He would do the soliloquy. I used of, it as an of, operating system. Yeah, I put an operating system on it. I bought an 80 gig Intel X25 no, and I put my OS. Th- on this it. was before that. It, the people with the the 16 and the 32 gig stuff, they use that yep. as a cache drive and not the no, OS. I, I bought a. 32 gig the caching, Samsung the caching drive software and, didn't even really exist then. No, I think it's probably well, about like, 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 system. It was it was you <laughs> had to use like Linux in that. But <laughs> I, I don't know what you. Well, no, but you, if you were an Adobe user, you boom, you slap in a 32 gig SSD and you point Adobe at that to be your scratch drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, sure, I've but, done but the plenty way of this at work, where it's like, okay, we can spend this to upgrade you fully, which is what you should do. But if you're on a limited budget, buy this tiny little thing, throw it in the scratch, and you're going to see a huge difference. Sure, but the way these notebooks are being configured with the Core i5 Plus branding means they have the Optane memory caching stuff turned on, which is completely hands-off. I've actually been messing with it on the secondary drive stuff this week, and it works pretty well. But it's completely hands-off. I bet it doesn't do things like like cache the page file. So no. if you are going above 8 gigs of RAM, you're still hitting the hard drive. So can't really make that argument to call it 24 gigs of RAM. And I, I think 8 gigs is enough for a notebook in most consumers. That's doing a lot of notebook reviews. That's usually the tier I price is like 8 gigs of memory oh, and 256 single gigs of SSD stick. as like mm-hmm. the the appropriate the tier spot. for the vast majority of people. Yeah, the sweet spot. That's yep. what I buy when I buy notebooks. But I just don't know what, like, I understand why they're calling it 24 gigs of memory because it works well from marketing when DRAM is really yep. expensive and they can't mm-hmm. just throw 16 gigs in there to kind of bump it up another price tier. But nobody, none of us would, no one would ever call it that outside of marketing. You would never call it 24. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree so, with that 100%. Go ahead, Josh. And that's why they're doing it. Is, yeah, you, you know, know I, I guess I can see that. I mean, you need to have, uh, you know, some some accuracy in, in advertising, some, you know, truth there. Yeah. Call it something else like uh, Turbo Cash. You've got I mean, sixteen gigs of uh, and, and, super storage. I don't care. Some call yeah. it something else. But, and and yeah. as you mentioned, like this isn't the first time that Dell has sold laptops with caching. They did it back in the day with sixteen gig NAND SSDs and RST. 
Like, and Wait, they, they call it, that they, they called it that. Nobody then. did that because of operating support. Well, they, they did sell them in that configuration for a little bit when Intel did introduce the name caching. Right. But no, they, they missed a, ch- a chance to say, you know, do spend your cache on 16 gigs, a super cache, and 8 gigs of RAM. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Yeah, I mean, it, there are stupider mean, ways to market it that yeah. would make as much sense as this. Wait, uh, did you just call it cache? Cache. Oh, because wow. it rhymes with cache. Oh, ah, he, cache he just said on cache. 16 gigs. Of he did not cache. say cache. My world is crumbling. It doesn't work. <laughs> but how many sex ports does it have? Not, not enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. so okay so we're all in agreement this is a fine configuration for a laptop especially at this price point. oh yeah but what happens when you go out and buy this thing you boot it up and you go about this system and it shows eight gigs of ram on this 24 gig laptop you just that's bought. another good point yeah i don't I mean, think anyone through, really does that yeah i mean but, it, it yeah. may not you know the average consumer buying this this line and the, the, not only buying it but not understanding what they're buying at purchase they probably wouldn't go into the about section and check the system stats, but but it's a possibility that may eventually occur and they could feel cheated. So right there from Dell's perspective, they're creating a sense of, of betrayal in their customers, you know. Uh, but this is... You know what, I, I think to solve this... If you're this, not bright enough to fall for that, or if you're bright enough to fall for this, you're bright enough to... What do you mean system properties? Ooh, good yeah, point. Well, Sure. It, to solve this, Ryan needs to get out his credit card, buy plane tickets. We all show up at the office, and then we have a Royal Rumble. Last person standing, yep. their opinion wins. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Did he leave a credit card here? Does he have his? He doesn't have a, the company card. You don't know him well enough to pretend to be him. No. <laughs> no. Well, he's got a credit card. How do you think he's going to get into the church without? Slipping that in to since the locks are changed. Oh, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's excellent. Good point. Good point. Well, so uh, you know, it, to be fair, in summary, we're not saying I'm, I'm not arguing. I don't think anybody's arguing that Dell or Intel is being like nefariously misleading because it is clear they do say right after the term memory they say eight gigs of RAM plus sixteen gigs of Optane. So it's upfront. It's just. Some of us are it's confusing. wary of, uh, of the, the way that they're framing it for people who wouldn't understand what those numbers after the colon meant. So, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, what comes because you know what? Nobody wants to look at the numbers after the colon. Sure. Thank you, Josh. Okay. Well, let's move on to some other types of Intel news. Uh, the 8086K. 40th anniversary edition? Yeah, I don't know if we talked about this when the rumor first popped up a couple weeks ago. I don't know if we posted anything on it. I think we might have mentioned it on a podcast. but I, I recall that we mentioned something. Yeah. yeah. So this has been going around as sort of a rumor. A seems like it started as a just random tweet from uh, one of the guys at Wikichips. It's like, hey, you know what? It's the 40th anniversary of the 8086 this year. It'd be really cool if they did an anniversary edition and he threw out some specs. Like, oh, it'd be cool if it could hit 5 gigahertz. Oh, well, as it turns out, today some retailers posted a i7-8086K and it has a spec of 5 gigahertz. Now, that would likely be single core turbo. Sure, it's sure. not going to be immensely I mean, different than any coffee is, like processor we've seen assuming this is the six core variant yeah so we have no idea what the core count would be there have also been a lot of heavy rumors about an eight core coffee lake s variant but mm-hmm. i don't think this would be it i think this would be a six core i don't think the eight core is going to be here until the end of the summer probably sure but turns out computex is next week so that might be a nice place to announce a cool processor like this is it going to have like classic era appropriate like packaging? I really hope so. I really yeah. hope they'd go. I mean, more if you're going to go through the all this just in branding and, and creating a, a, an additional skew, you got to get got to go out. You got to get yeah. the get the nostalgia factor. Well, it better ship with a classic heatsink then. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It looks like the European pricing is around 480 euros for this. So that that seems like it'll be that pretty. It'll be high. pretty steep. We don't like. It might be a limited release thing. That's the, yeah, yeah. The Pentium Anniversary Edition was pretty easy to get and mm-hmm. was available for a while. So 
we'll have to see what potential details. What company did their uh, Sony did an anniversary PlayStation, right? That yeah, was that like was super, super, super small release. Yeah, there was the 25th anniversary ThinkPad, yep. which they did last mm-hmm. year. Which mm-hmm. that, I thought that was really cool. The the ThinkPad anniversary. Yeah, I had the seven row keyboard on it. That was really nice. Nice. So we'll uh, we'll keep an eye out uh, for hopefully something next week on nostalgia on is that. alive in the world of PC hardware. Well, yeah, just absolutely. ask Josh. Uh, well, I didn't even have an 8086. I had an 8088 knockoff as my first yeah, nice. real PC. It explains so much. <laughs> NEC, baby. They made a, you know, so a uh, 11 megahertz turbo. Mm. Significantly Size faster than the uh, Intellivision. Yeah. <laughs> Which was announced as coming back today. Did you see the, uh, the, the, the Atari is now available yeah. through their uh, Indiegogo? Indiegogo. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I feel like I've been hearing Andy about did that the graphics forever. for it. I, I want to know a teardown of that damn thing and what's in it. Uh, and didn't they announce this Atari thing like years ago? Over a year it's, ago. It's been a long At least time. A year. They, yeah, they launched yeah. that website, which had absolutely nothing on it but the old classic mm-hmm. logo and yeah, nothing. I'll be amazed if that thing ever actually gets produced. <laughs> really? And yeah. ships. Yeah. Atari is essentially just a company that sells their name to other companies at this point. It's sure. a licensing department. They've been bought and sold how many times in the past yeah. 20 years? It, there's been <clears> some <throat> real crap with the Atari brand recently, like Bluetooth speakers and s- stuff like that, I think. Like, just mm-hmm. real bottom-of-the-barrel stuff. Yeah. But, you know, a nice-looking original, like, the, the keeping with the original design and having properly emulated, you know, of there was a lot of crap on that platform yeah so having properly emula- <laughs> emulated versions of some of the more popular games you yeah. know they're cashing in on that nintendo classic fever exactly they say that did you just say they're caching in no well i should have you should have i missed that opportunity yeah you did oh well do better next time I, no promise or fix it in post yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so here's a story that's going to be right up Alex's alley. Uh, we've got a, uh, <laughs> a story from... <laughs> I didn't intend anything no vulgar with that. Yeah. What? Okay, well... Um, I have I have one post on this thing, and it's all alone. I am so sad of you people. Look at this. Look at this. No <laughs> responses. That effort, nothing. That comment. All that effort. I did all that research and all that markup and nothing. Just... I, Crickets. I, honestly, it's the first time seeing it. I didn't even scroll down. I'm sorry, <sighs> dude. Not even that guy that writes Warren Pete in in the in in the comments commented on. This. I know Power Guy wasn't around. I, I feel <sighs> abandoned. Anyway, yeah. I mean, I just I clicked through to TechSpot, so that's. But uh, what what do you? Why don't you take a lead on this one, Alex? Tell us tell us all all the good stuff. Well, I mean this this is just one of many many different projects you can get. Uh, I don't recall the name of the board they're using here. Oh, look at that. I, it's, there's so many beautiful, beautiful pictures oh, in this Woody. article. So it, it goes through the whole process where you get your, you can either get your own PCBs and get them printed out uh, and pre-assembled. Uh, some of them you have to solder every single thing on there. There's, there's a wide variety of options here. Um, the article goes through each actual step, you know, soldering the base plates, assembling the top plate, um, Choosing the wonderful options of colors. There is a whole niche market here of people building custom keycaps. And, and there's there's the beauty right there. That, yeah, look at that. <laughs> well, uh, I like those keycaps. That's uh those are the replicas from the oh what is that? The uh space board or something, the old classic one. Mm-hmm. I can never remember the name of it. The person who made this keyboard's username is Hold These Balls. So, you know. Well, that makes me feel better about touching that keyboard. Yeah, it seems about right. <laughs> but I like the menu key right in the middle. That's awesome. Two shift, well, a thumb oh, yeah. on a shift button. It's wow. not wow. thumb Boy, shift. That's, that's actually, that's really kind of sweet. Instead of one long bar, you I, actually have a button in the middle that, of course, nobody actually touches with their thumbs. So this is perfect. Well, no, he doesn't touch it with his thumbs. We've already determined that. No. <laughs> well, someone else is holding his balls. It wasn't him. Oh, jeez. Really? How did it get? So I, I believe all of these options are powered by QMK. 
uh, quantum mechanical keyboard uh, firmware. Oh, that's kind of neat. That, there is some really neat minimized keyboards out there. Um, that is... Oh, that one's cute. Need more buttons. <laughs> I, I, I think the default layout on those, that is a... Uh, what is that? Is that a quantum? No, it's not a quantum. It's a plank. That's it. Mm, yeah. Um, and you can get that both in the having an actual space bar like that, the, the huge space bar it has, or you can get it in, they call, I believe it's an MIT version where the space bar is split into its own keycaps. Huh. Um, but do you have to run Vim on it? No, no. <laughs> I you can, mean, yeah. You can, but... <laughs> and you could you could actually use Emacs on this where you can move around the you can actually have uh with QM, QMK you can map as many um actions to a key as you want. I believe you get up to thirty two layers. So, you know, that control alt meta hyper tab V C actually can be done with one hand. Do you nice. know what else can be done with one hand? Okay. No, no doubt. No. 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 Doesn't cause as much cramping. <laughs> 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 And you're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are terrible. Well, uh, for the for the audio listeners, this is one of those segments where you really need to to when you when you get out of the car or finish your commute or whatever, go to a device with a screen and, and check out this article at TechSpot because you got to see these pictures. Uh, the our discussion does not do the ju- do them justice of how neat uh, and custom they are. It's very uh, very cool. And then you can fall down the custom keyboard rabbit hole and spend hundreds of dollars on your keyboards. Yeah, we, 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 we can, can have an opinion on keycap materials. Of course. How there, could you not? What? There's actually discussion about this? About keycap materials? Yeah. yeah. Have you have you followed Scott Watson lately? Yeah. He's got <laughs> real deep down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, that's a, that's a great topic i wish those of you who start something there some good luck don't don't uh don't become alex (laughs) don't become that part of alex (laughs) what what i mean that's it's a core part of your being it's okay this is the primary interface between you and the computer you must be serious about this all right sounds good moving Um, on (laughs) i got my amazon basics i'm fine uh so we've got a new case from antec uh which i haven't haven't seen Antex name listed in the case Hello, for a while. Yes. Is, that, is that how you pronounce it? It's Lucy? Oh, I pronounce it. Okay. Well, then that's what we're going to go with. The Lucy. It's a new aluminum case. Uh, very nice. Got a tempered glass side panel. Yeah, it does. Nice. Uh, what, do you, what do you call that? Brushed aluminum? Yeah. Finish. You know, it's a very soft. It doesn't have a uh, front uh, optical or five, front five and a quarter, but very few cases do these days, it seems. Um, but a very nice, uh, nice looking case from, from Antec and tech reports got a, uh, an overview for you. Uh, if we can check that out, Kenneth, thank you. <laughs> oh no. Am I in trouble? <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> well, now you got to scroll. Oh God. <laughs> so needy. Well, I would have sat there. Never mind. <laughs> so has Antec ever made a non beautiful case? Oh yeah, yeah. Did you see were... the skeleton? Ooh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay. I yeah. mean, they they were, but what was it? Maybe nine, ten years ago, they were the case manufacturer. I mean, you right. went yeah, to and them. between two thousand two thousand five. They were they were on top of their game, and then they fell down. They put out some yeah. real conquers in the past five. I mean, or six I was years. using Antex up till probably twenty eleven, I think, yeah, and they, then I switched they, to Corsair. They, they revised the P180 with like the P280, I think. Like mm-hmm. they semi modernized. They put like cable routing grommets and stuff in. And that was a good case. I used that for my like HTPC for a while. I just mm-hmm. had sitting next to my TV. And that was a solid, quiet case. But since then, they've just kind of lost their way. There's like that $1,000 case that Sebastian reviewed of theirs. I was like all tempered glass and gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. With all, yeah, the big giant doors that, yeah, yeah. the suicide door mm-hmm. type thing and just, but this seems to be a pretty good return to form. Ninety two bucks. Yeah, Ninety two, and I guess uh, eighty four right 80 now. Even cheaper, yeah. yeah. And but, there's also a silent version if you don't want the tempered glass side panel, which is this is like definitely a traditional antique case mm-hmm. here. Why is the tempered glass one cheaper? Economics, mm-hmm. something, something. Free market right. demand. I don't know. Maybe they. they 
they have more of those tempered glass panels than they do of the, the insulated door. Eh, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Also, it depends if you're not... Who was the seller on the... Uh, that's uh, this is technology, technology galaxy. But who's, who's the seller on the other one there? Amazon. Uh, Amazon. So there you go. Different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that'll be doing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a nice, uh, real nice offering from Antec. Good to see them back in the game with something uh, that looks pretty, pretty attractive and pretty affordable. Yeah. All right. One hundred and five bucks. I'll take it. Well, even or, we just or discussed less. How it was eighty five dollars for the tempered glass. Whatever. I'm not listening because I'm too busy drinking and looking at Jim. What? <sighs> we talked about this. <laughs> the judge said, <laughs> <laughs> "Okay, um, I'm I'm more than 150 yards away from you." Okay, sure, but remember there was the implied harassment. Hmm. Oh, he doesn't imply it. <laughs> no, it's 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 applied. <laughs> <laughs> directly applied harassment. Okay. Uh, harassment right applied directly, directly for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh. so how about those epic vulnerabilities? I guess. Um, yeah. So, all right, uh, Jeremy, what, what's uh, what's the story here? Uh, well, you know, apparently, if someone's got physical access to your server and it's running an Epic and they've got admin rights, they can do things to it, Wait, which of course is utterly terrifying. Up. Are we talking you know? Amazon? Or are we talking Epic? Because so, yeah, as opposed to just this stupid arch vulnerability that isn't actually a vulnerability because you're already screwed at the point it's an issue. How about something actually scary? Your entire purchase history from Amazon.com from your very first dip into the scary world we did this i probably shouldn't click this link Don't especially click it. on the we, stream no we did this no. uh not long after i moved here i remember oh yeah and you I, like ran the official report yeah they'll even let you download it and you can make yeah. a chart for yourself it was it was bad yeah you you don't it, want, it's you only don't gotten worse at that list well we had like three well let's see how long are children in diapers two years we had two years of diapers Thousands of diapers delivered. All of our furniture. TVs. I don't know. <laughs> and the other things you don't want to admit to. Well, sure. Well, that, that Amazon dash button for the magic wands it really adds up every yeah, time you, you press that. Right, well, <laughs> you, buy, you buy one magic wand and suddenly all your recommendations are screwed up. Screwed up? Yeah. How? Well, you you really <laughs> carefully crafted. Never mind. I don't want to go on this. Sure, yeah, you pick the pinnacle, and then they just give you trash. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, you can just go go to Amazon and request your report and find out how much money you've spent, and then cry, and then cry, and then buy some tissues from Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> of course. All right. Um, Last uh, news story, we've got a uh, water cool, all caps, water cool, heat killer four, a custom water block for the GTX, uh, NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, it's a and it's a monster. block. Yeah. You like cool VRMs? Because <laughs> you can get cool VRMs. Yep, and the hard OCP has the, uh, the full review there. Look how big that window is. Yeah. Well, it's very pretty. Yeah. So there is no argument that it's very pretty, and it's bloody effective. I, it, you're, the chip was running just over 30 degrees, just under 40, but the frequencies it was hitting were bloody impressive. As he waits for his slow internet to load here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those channels. Those micro channels. Yeah, no, it was happily sitting at 2.1 gigahertz. Whereas the Founders Edition stock, when they overclocked it, the best they can get was 1.86. Were so yeah, it's, it's a little bit chillier, but it runs faster. Were, were those microfins part of a sub-assembly, or were they actually milled straight into the, into the billet? Oh. It looked no. like there was tooling marks on them. Yeah, they sort of redesigned the way that they did it because this is uh, not the original release of it. Yeah, that one right there. So yeah, if you take a look at it, yeah, that that looks like one 
piece of billet. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wow. That's some serious CNC action. Yeah, I wonder how long the tool ran for that. Is that a little bit of time? <laughs> because it's probably reflected in the overall price of the water block. Mm. Yeah, do we know how much this is? If you gotta ask. That's probably very true. Why that'd be too easy. Let's check the first page. Uh, 150 bucks in Canada, so guessing 120 down there. 120. That's lower than I yeah. would have thought. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong one. 220 bucks. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. that's more like that's better. Uh, yeah. the, the wrong picture until I actually clicked through and it was, yeah. wait a second, no, that's just a block. That's not a whole thing. Yeah, I was figuring it'd be at least three bills. I pay for quality. Yes, you do. Nah, so that's, just, a, that's, yeah, a just the yeah, that's the older yeah, version. Okay. Seems to be a little difficult to find right now from U.S. retailers, which mm. I believe they're a German company. Yeah, yes, uh, they are. I might have to order it directly from them. Well, if you can't find one of those, why don't why not buy yourself thirty T-shirts from PC Per? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One hundred twenty-five euro. Looks like oh, two bills. Yeah, that's plus shipping. So pretty though. Look at that. I'm so All pretty. That material. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Ah, well, very cool. Sharp yeah, looking if product. If you can find it and you got a 1080 Ti and you want to water cool it, check it out. All right, uh, we're we've arrived. We've survived all the way to the picks. Uh, thank Jeremy, the Lord. yes, thank. And the, not just that, but Washington. Managed to win. Oh, excellent. Excellent. It is. Uh, all respect to our Vegas viewers, but, uh, but uh, Ovechkin yeah. deserves a cup. You will you will have your turn at some point. I mean, it may <laughs> be now, but, <laughs> but still. All right. So, uh, Jeremy, you are up first with your pick. Oh, this thing, I saw a commercial for it, and I have to go out and buy dozens of them because it is the best thing ever. It, it, right it's it's a 32 open. gig flash okay. drive for $113, but it, it's a picture keeper pro. And, and, and if you click it into your machine, it immediately launches your, your, my pictures folder and lets you copy them over easily. I think also, you, it's malware. I think he's had a stroke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, yeah, you could I buy, like the one say, star. a 16 pack of 16 gigs for half that price. It was that one star written review? Is there some, some text <laughs> we can look at? Oh, bitter, bitter disappointment. disappointment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it doesn't work very well either. <laughs> no, I saw this and I'm like, are you kidding me? This doesn't exist. And I looked it up and I'm like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Amazon's selling it for $113. Wow. <laughs> So yeah, you, you gotta go buy as many as you can right away. <laughs> so, so this is the anti pick of the week. Yeah, this is just the damn funniest thing <laughs> I've seen like, all week. It's <laughs> gonna be on sign. LGR Oddware in like twenty five years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, wow. well, Josh, do you have something that someone in their right mind would actually want to buy? Well, yeah, because uh, even though Alan uh, reviewed it last week, it's already available on Newegg. It the is. The E-Data XPG S8200. Oh, my goodness. You, it's already there. It's such a tease. For slightly, slightly below MSRP at $169.99. Thank you. But does That's, it back pictures up? No. I mean, Isn't, I guess it could. That fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? Because yeah, you can get it now. Just it's very on the outside of your that's laptop. Deep. It looks like they're shipping straight out of China, I guess, because it says two, two to ten cash? days. I don't know. It says it ships in the U.S. But, yeah, most of two most customers receive within two to ten days. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'm just not used but to anyway, Newegg's uh, shipping estimates. Who needs it right away? Just get it, buy it for the price because it's now. inexpensive and What's it's nine sixty running. Oh. How's a crash? Three fifty for the nine sixty. I think that's MSRP. Mm-hmm. I think so. And Great. available. 
Oh, 90 oh, bucks oh, for man. the 240. Oh, so by a data. Nice. Oh, there's so, your... yeah, I'm, I'm kind of amazed that they hit the market as quickly as they have, considering reviews just came out. Well, if they're if they're doing their job well, they'll time availability <laughs> with reviews. It's just that sometimes it doesn't work Most out. Most people don't do their job real well. Yeah, sometimes or they're their under different pressures. Silly. Yeah, stuff happens. The Kraken yeah. got them. <laughs> All right, Ken, what do you got for us? Uh, probably a mistake. Probably. So there's been it this, looks very legitimate. There's been this project I've been following a little bit. Uh, it's from a sort of Chinese enthusiast forum called 51NB. And one Sounds of the things legit. they do is they are obsessed with ThinkPads and they love retro ThinkPads. Mm-hmm. And somehow this uh, cabal, we'll say in China, is making <laughs> modern motherboards for vintage ThinkPads. So I bit the bullet and ordered one of these machines through sort of a third-party mediary that deals in Facebook and email. Mm-hmm. I wired them a substantial sum of money. Haven't gotten anything yet, but I'm helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they, they did follow up with you. Yeah, no, yeah. They I, said, I, please send social security number and photo ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it wasn't supposed to ship yet, so it's I need to follow up with them in a couple of couple of that's, days it's supposed to be shipping here pretty soon but it's coming from that's china that's not so who where knows. the d sub was before how fast get it but this is a thinkpad x201 which was a 12.5 inch ultra portable at the time uh that's it's what they launched kind of alongside the macbook air like this is mm-hmm. their thin and yep. light sort of take on things but they've shoved an i5 8250 in it so a it's so where the D-Sub was before. 15 watt processor. It's got modern-ish I/O. Uh, still like options for LTE, 4G LTE connectivity, uh, M.2 slots. Uh, well, one M.2 slot, one mini PCIe slot, uh, 6DDR4, two and a half inch drive bay. They essentially have. What I believe is new old stock of these enclosures, and they slightly modify them to fit the new motherboards with the new ports and everything. Mm-hmm. And they're packaging them up, putting uh, actually one of the cool parts is a nineteen twenty by twelve hundred sixteen by ten display hmm. in there. So they've sort of found compatible. Like this is a common thing with retro ThinkPads that there are some compatible displays that have come out that have higher resolution. They can easily quote unquote retrofit into an old chassis. So that's one of the things they do new processors. And I'm just, I'm curious as hell. This is bizarre. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I like it. Go away for a second, Alex. I'll I like the, individual, pull up the actual website. Yeah. Don't look at me like, well, you're saying something interesting. So, like- so this is the form where all of this stuff actually happens. Uh, if you, if you cut to it, I think this is the development thread. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there's, uh, hold on, somewhere in here there are like the modification instructions. If I was smart, I'd actually uh, translate. First you find the fool, then you find his money. Okay, here we go. Trial production board installation guide. So, like, you can just get the motherboard and the processor unit, and apparently they're shipping with ES parts. Like, it's not really an official thing in any capacity. <laughs> like, you can make slight modifications to the chassis to get everything to fit. How, how do you say fell off a truck in Mandarin? <laughs> uh, it's it's probably a pretty common industrious phrase. Industrious individuals. Yeah. Yes. It's probably going to have like some, it. some super secret embedded nice key loggers and spyware. Mm-hmm. But I just I had I had to know I, I have to know what what this is gonna what this is gonna be like is if that and a, when I plug forget. it into your network. Is that an onboard sim? It looks like it. I believe mine is supposed to be coming with an LTE radio, so we'll see how that, that works. makes sense. They threw it in when I ordered it, so <laughs> you know, this, who even knows what frequencies it'll work on, but. Yeah, you have a two and a half inch drive bay there. You can kind of see the Wi-Fi and LTE antennas going everywhere. It's it's fascinating. They've also done this with other machines, like some X series and like like T seventies, like T like yeah. some or the X sixty two would be nice. Yeah, some 
significantly older ThinkPads, but I personally always like the X201 form factor. Brian actually used one for a long time, so we have an original X201 to compare to. Nice. But it has a seven row keyboard, has a think light, has the nub in, has all of that great ThinkPad stuff, magnesium chassis. Love the nubbin. Yeah. So legitimately. It's like the super extreme version of the ThinkPad 25th anniversary edition mm-hmm. where they kinda kinda phoned it in a little bit and just yeah, put yeah. the old keyboard on the new on the new T four seventy. But sure. so we'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> How much money did you spend? <laughs> We're not gonna get into that yet. Okay. We're only gonna say that if I get a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and I that's right, right. I should use the word. Several million yen. How much money is at risk is the did I piss proper away? way to say that. All right. Um, we love the capitalists in China doing yes. this stuff. Yes. Yeah. Love. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's a, if it's only Lenovo would do something like this. Mm. You're part of mm. a you're part of a small market, Ken. Yeah. All well, right. It apparently can't be that small. <laughs> They're making bespoke motherboards in China. <laughs> well, I mean, that may not be as big of a deal for them. Yeah. I mean, they've got all that equipment and <laughs> no. I don't know. But uh okay. Well, uh, mine real quick here is um some really cheap uh, Bluetooth earbuds. Um, I I used to have a nice pair of Sennheisers that I lost or broke or something, and, and it's been years. And so I've got like big over the year Bluetooth headphones. Um, but it's summer, and I want to take my kid to the park. And if I'm sitting in the park wearing these while he's playing on the playground, I'm just a dad watching his kid if i'm sitting there with my sennheiser hd 700s on i get the cops called on me yeah so but i also didn't want to spend a lot of money because i don't i mean i'm not an audiophile i like good audio but i'm not i wouldn't i'm not that attuned to that quality and i don't want to spend hundreds of dollars so i found you know there's a ton of these on amazon and other markets um and they're all very similar they're in-ear bluetooth earbuds uh, just like the more expensive ones except these are 24 bucks hmm. Uh, so I got them about a week ago, and uh, so far so good. They uh, sound quality is pretty good. The seal is pretty good in the ear, so it blocks out a lot of ambient noise. Oh, you can do. I can do yoga. I mean, I, I can't that's do not that. Yoga. You yeah. sure could. That's not yoga. What is that? Oh, it's just stretching. That's like I don't know. Ballet. <laughs> that's like ballet type. That's gymnastics. Ballet. I can't do gymnastics. I, I can't do anything. But you could do that. Take I mean, your I, t-shirt <laughs> and knot it in the corner like that. Yeah, yeah it's true. I mean, okay. I, if I was doing this, it'd be because I was in the throes of some sort of seizure, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the sound quality is uh, very good. The, the battery life thus far, I haven't, haven't ever gotten to the point where I've tried to run it out and fully measure it yet, but I've worn it for probably five hours and it's still going. Um, and, uh, they're real lightweight. The controls work well. You know, some of the reviews say it stops working after a couple months, or if you get it really sweaty, it, uh, stops working, even though they advertise it as sweat proof. <laughs> uh, but my view is at this price point, if I can get six months and they break, it's not a big deal because you know, it, it's, you can buy another it's, it's one. It's the price or, of three Starbucks coffees. I guess. But do those Starbucks sure. comes with the diversity add on? Exactly. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I wouldn't, I have to insist on that. Um, so yeah, it's, this is, I don't want to say disposable because that's wasteful, but I'm, I hope they last long. But if they don't, it's not a big deal. Uh, so, and, and again, this is just one brand that I've had a good experience with. There's a hundred different ones there. Uh, check them out. And check them out especially if you, like me, can't stand the Apple earbuds. No earbud or any type of headphone that Apple's ever made works with my ear. It just doesn't, it doesn't fit well. It doesn't You're not sit. the chosen one. I haven't chosen one. You're not the chosen one. I'm not the, the chosen, chosen one. No, one. I'm not. Um, so I can't. Earpods uh, are not for uh, me. The well, even yeah. this year is I, just barely sitting here, and it's a pain in the ass. Uh, so if you like the in ear ones, uh, check those out. So let me ask you this. Yes. Kim. Yes, Josh. Have you actually ever had the police called on you at the playground? Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, why are we no. thinking about this? No, no, but I did have the police call. It wasn't the playground in a parking lot when I was in college because I was looking at That's, a car. I see. You know, my wife actually had the police called on her really? at a playground. Yeah. What was she doing? Because uh, she told our 
20 month old child that he needed to go home from the playground and he refused and she said no. So she picked him up and put him in the car and drove away. And 10 minutes later, we got the knock on our front door. The police were there. Someone had called the cops on us because it just didn't look like he wanted to leave. Sure, he didn't. <laughs> so we had a welfare check and a nice call up and some background checks because my kid was tired and was throwing a fit at the playground. And the wife took him home and put him down for a nap, and he was fine. But we got the cops called on us. We never would have gotten away with that as kids. No. No, you've got to murder a child when we were kids to get the cops call on it. Otherwise, <laughs> you, 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 you refuse the parents and the belt came out and they whipped you and everybody was like, kids should know better. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. You got the belt? I had a wooden spoon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so how about mechanical keyboards, yeah, let's, guys? Let's, speaking uh, of spoons. Speaking of wooden spoons, <laughs> Alex's pick. Oh, so so we had the the, the earlier you know, article about build your own keyboard, and I, I am a big proponent of that and everything, but I just don't have the time. Um, so my wallet became much much thinner. I don't know when did I get this? Like three months ago now? Might have been four. Uh, this is the Ergodox EZ. It's a ortholinear keyboard. Uh, the rows are not the columns, I should say, are not offset, and the rows are offset to match the the actual ergonomics of your hand. Um, this is insanely hard to adapt to. Um, the first week was painful. The second week still hurt. The third week started to feel right, and it took me about two months to become comfortable. Really selling it. Well, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, but I have been. It sounds like, you know, licking sandpaper. Yeah. But eventually you get used to it and it's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I did get my tongue pierced multiple times and it hurt like hell, but it felt great afterwards. Um, but anyway, what I'm getting at here is that I've been suffering from RSI in both of my hands for many, many years. And yeah, Linus made a video about it and it's terrible. So now I really hate it. I know, right? Well, it's the dankest keyboard ever. No, it's not a dank keyboard. Ugh. It looks pretty dank in this photo. No, no, it's not. Um, but after switching over to this primarily for three months, um, my RSI in both of my hands has been reduced 90%. Why is there a cat octopus? It's the GitHub octopus. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. Yep. Yeah, all, all the source code's available uh, for the firmware. They have a really, really nice configurator online. Um, if you go up to the right, top right, and hit clone edit, you can actually go through and change stuff on it. Uh, you have the multiple layers there. Um, and each key can either do a, a one shot, you can have it do multiple where, you know, if you tap it, it'll do like a tab, or if you hold it down, it'll be a shift. <laughs> This is all I need. Mean. Wait, shift plus V equals capital V? <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I love this already. <laughs> this well played, great. Ken. Well played. So, Best thing ever. But anyway, I do have mine because the downfall of this is that once you get used to this, where it is completely isolinear, Typing on one of these doesn't feel right anymore. Half keyboard will travel. Pretty I much. I can't believe you haven't. I was surprised you brought this up. I thought you must have picked this before because for months now I've been listening to you <laughs> come in and go, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, th this is this is very much a long term thing. It's not something where you just go out on a whim and like, hey, I'm going to buy one of these. Well, maybe I did. Uh <laughs> But there, like I said, there is a it's it requires a lot of time of adaptation, um, and that actually gets onto a deeper topic, which we kind of touched on with the uh, DIY keyboard article. Um, this opens up a huge rabbit hole because as you have the ability to modify your keyboard keyboard layout easily, um, starting after about four weeks, um, 
I started with a standard query layout uh, with a few standard default, you know, layouts for keys that came pre-configured. Uh, after about four weeks, I started changing them because um, as a CLI user for the my day job, that's all I do is work in Bash, basically. Uh, you start to wear your pinkies out. Vim hurts your pinkies a lot. Mm -hmm. Bash hurts your pinkies a lot. Um, so you move keys around. So as my as I noticed keys being used heavily by my pinkies or more than one key away, it would get moved. Um, so now, like when you're going through your shift keys, you know, for your number set, you know, exclamation point at mark, uh, hash bang, all that's been moved down to a separate layer on the home row. So now instead of moving two keys, it's a chord and no movement. Um, and this opens up a very large door and a very, very deep hole because you can just optimize forever and never get to what's right. Um, but what really tell me you're reprogramming a key occasionally, guys. Yeah, I mean, really, this is just this is normal stuff we do, right? Right? <laughs> no, no, I, I meant Ken and the gang. Oh, you mean just randomly just remapping a single well, key on you? He doesn't you. bring it bring it in every day, so uh, our, our access is limited. Yeah. So, but the really nice thing, what really may may probably push me over the edge because this is not a cheap keyboard. Um, you can swap the keys, the key switches. You can pull, yeah, it's the change it yourself one. Um, you can pull the keycaps off, pull the switches out, and replace them as you see fit. Oh, God. That's a lot of money. Well, you can buy pretty much stock keys pretty much anywhere. I, uh, yeah. Can I get half red and two th a third blue and some uh, scatterings of golds? And <laughs> I, I went with the, the Ky Kayla, Kyla, whatever it is. Uh, Kale. Kale uh, speed coppers, which are the 1.1 millimeter actuated um, tactile non collared switches. Really like those a lot, but for like the meta keys on the thumb rest there, I switch those over to blues. Uh, so shift keys, tab keys, control keys are all blues, and everything else is the, the coppers. So, but like I said, I've had this thing for four months, and it took me this long to finally make the call of saying, this is, this is worth it. <laughs> this is worth the money. And it's a lot of money. It is. I believe mine all up, which was configured with the tilt tent, um, no lights, no oh, wrist. Oh, come on. No, I'm not getting lights on my keyboard. Ugh. No, I refuse. I draw the line. Uh, I think it was 329 wheels up. That's a chunk of change. It is. But like I said, my wrist don't hurt anymore, and I would pay 10 times that amount to have that. I've got a Microsoft 4000 series keyboard that very much like that in ways. Mm -hmm. Except, of course, the keys are not. The switches are crap as compared. But yeah, it saves these things. Yep. And th there's also the uh, Kinesis makes one. They make a whole lineup. Uh, but they did the one where I believe it's called a, the clone is called the Dactyl where the key switches are convex over your fingers. So there's no reaching like this. It's all just wrist movement. Um, that's a lot more expensive than this. I believe this goes for 700 and up, I want to say. Mm, that's a few dollars. Jump change. Yeah, I could just... get 24 gigs of RAM for that. <laughs> <laughs> now you need to just get the mouse that's... Positioned on its side. The handshake you know? mouse. Uh -huh. Handshake mouse, yeah. He doesn't use a mouse. That's true. Nah, uh, track real men don't use mice. Well, I do use the mouse, but <laughs> we won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's the show. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. It was uh, great to hang out with you, as always. Uh, make sure you check out uh, pcpro.com slash live to join us live, pcpro.com slash subscribe to make sure that you're on our mailing list so that you never miss a live event. Uh, masochists are invited to visit pcpro.com slash podcast where you can watch all the prior episodes. And if you want to ping us on Twitter, Ryan's at Ryan Shrout and the pcpro corporate branding is <laughs> at pcpro. Uh, so uh, thanks again uh, for uh, episode 501, I'm Jim Tannis. 
We don't do that anymore. No, oh, we, we don't. don't do that. No. I don't watch the show. I told you. I'm still Josh. <laughs> We're over there. You most of the time. <laughs> I'm not listening. Wow. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Just shut it off. Just done. We're done. Okay. We're done here. Done. Bye. Run away. Shut, Thank shut it you off. for joining us for this fantastic evening of scintillating conversation in the technical sphere. That what he said. Good night. <laughs>